blog, Liam and Theo, the sniffer dog and his master, being repatriated together. There they are. Book launch with a difference. The MOD is buying every copy of that one. Why? And Grim Up North for the coalition in the Barnsley by-election. I'll be speaking to a Lib Dem activist about what happened. That's come. Well, the news the Lib Dem leader Nick Clegg has insisted his party shouldn't be written off after getting a kicking in the Barnsley Central by-election. Labour held a seat which was vacated by the disgraced former MP Eric Ilsley. The Lib Dems slipped to sixth place behind UKIP, the British National Party and an independent candidate. The defeat was so bad the Lib Dems lost their deposit, but their leader Nick Clegg denies it's a significant loss, saying the party will prove critics wrong. The result in, in the by-election last night was obviously a bad result for uh, the Liberal Democrats. Uh, the truth is it was a, it was a no contest for any non-Labour candidate. It was a very safe Labour seat. Labour got a huge majority on an abysmally low turnout and everybody else was left to pick up the pieces. Uh, I've no doubt that people will try and uh, use this single result to write off the Liberal Democrats. They've done it in the past and we've proved them wrong and we will prove them wrong again. Labour leader Ed Miliband has urged the Lib Dems to work with his party, saying voters have sent a clear message to Nick Clegg. I think Nick Clegg's response was incredibly complacent. I don't think you should write off the people of any part of Britain. And they've sent him a very clear message. They don't like the fact that he is part of a Conservative-led government that is betraying the hopes of the next generation of people in this country, that is squeezing living standards, and is frankly breaking a lot of the promises he made at the election. I urge Liberal, De Liberal Democrats to come and work with Labour. Well, in our Westminster studio is Lib Dem blogger Richard Flowers. Hi, Richard. Thanks for joining us. Want to go and work with Mr Miliband? Um, well, if he comes up with some policies that we'd be interested in listening to, then yes, he could approach us at the, after the next general election and we can talk about a coalition deal then, just as we did with the Conservatives this time. We talked with Labour this time, but he wasn't very interested in working with us then. If you listen to any of the books that have come out about the coalition arrangements, he seemed to be much more focused on winning the Labour leadership than actually doing a deal for the good of the country at the time. Nobody in Barnsley seems to be interested in your policies at the moment. Why do you think that is? Barnsley was always going to be a big win for the Labour Party. In fact, they haven't done as well this year as they did um, with the previous MP in 2005 or even 2001 or seven when they had huge majorities there. We've always been weak in the area. We don't have any councillors. Um, and uh, it's very difficult under those. I've campaigned in circumstances like that. We had a good candidate. Dominic was great talking to people, met a lot of people, great lot of interest in saving the local market. But there's only so many people he can talk to one to one. And if Labour's candidate was. Uh, Giving, uh, was, uh, was saying that there was a, a message from the, election, from the electorate. It was they really weren't interested in this by-election. The turnout was down hugely. If anything, the message of this by-election is that we need a change in our broken electoral system. If there'd been an AV system, maybe at the last general election, this time they got 60%, they won straight away. But at the last general election, they didn't get 50% of the vote. It would have been interesting to see where the transfers would have gone in 2010. We haven't got AV, though, have we? And as a result, you were absolutely battered. I mean, however, whatever gloss you try and put on it, you were battered, weren't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that AV would have saved the Liberal Democrat vote this time. Um, not in this condition, not in this election. Um, whoever won the general election last year was going to have to face some difficult choices. Uh, the Labour Party have been playing a very negative campaign about the cuts, saying it's all the, all the coalition's fault, that we're going too fast. But the difference between our budget and Alistair Darling's budget that he laid out just about a year ago is really very small so far. Um, I think Labour need to be telling us where they would cut, what they would do instead. They say they want a 50% tax ban, but is that Mr Ball's policy and Mr Miliband's policy? We don't know yet. Mm. Do you think the coalition's still working? I think, if anything, the uh, coalition is going to be stronger as a result of this. I'm afraid I don't see any sitting MP looking at these results and saying, oh, well, let's go to the country now because the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats are clearly so popular.
Doesn't necessarily mean the coalition's stronger, though, does it? The coalition is working very well. Um, Have you got your we... fingers crossed when you're saying that? No, look, honestly. <laughs> um, we have disagreements. That's good. Cabinet government is what the country is supposed to be run by. It's supposed to be about people arguing things out, making different choices openly and between each other. We have disagreements. We've had disagreements about the approach to Libya, possibly between David Cameron, David, uh, Nick Clegg, Liam Fox. Um, because we're in a cabinet government, those can be aired properly. They can be discussed. People, people can raise the merits and demerits of both sides, and they can come to a properly decided conclusion. It's not like the Labour government, where everything was decided in Tony's den on the sofa. OK. We're going to have to leave it there. Lib Dem blogger Richard Flowers, thanks very much indeed for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Let's tell you about the May Day bank holiday. It could be scrapped and replaced by either a St George's Day break in April, 23rd of course, or a Trafalgar Day in October, all part of a plan to boost tourism. Sky's Tig Enright reports.